Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our Meet the Coach webinar series, today featuring our women's soccer coach, Ashley Van Vechten. The series is designed to introduce our new coaches to the roster community. My name is Terry Gurnett, class of 1977, and I am the Associate Director of Athletics. Before we get started, I'd like to share a few Zoom tips. I'd like to invite you to choose Speaker View from the drop-down menu at the top of your screen. This will allow you to see the speakers more easily. In order to ensure an optimal experience for everyone tuned in, we have muted all participants for the presentation part of this program. If you'd like to view this session with closed captions, click CC on the bottom toolbar and select, <coughs> excuse me, turn on subtitles. If you're having any trouble viewing the meeting, you can call in and listen using the phone number that was included in your comment confirmation email. There'll be a Q&A portion to today's event. If you'd like to ask a question, please direct those to the moderator via the chat function located at the bottom of the screen. Coach Van Vechten will take questions toward the end of the session. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our new head coach, Ashley Van Vechten. Van Vechten is the fourth head coach of women's soccer in our history at the University of Rochester, bringing with her a wealth of collegiate coaching, playing, success experience, excuse me. <coughs> I apologize. She returns to the university after coaching at Suffolk University in Boston for the past three and a half years, where she led her teams to a program record for shutouts, 20 and 48 games, qualified for the GNAC playoffs by her second season, and was named the GNAC Coach of the Year, the first women's soccer coach at Suffolk to attain that honor. Under Van Vechten's tutelage, three players earned United States Soccer All-Region honors. Five players garnered all-conference accolades during her time at Suffolk. She, served, she also served as an assistant coach at Rochester from 2014 and 2017. Van Vechten was a four-year starter at Rochester and one of the most decorated players in the history of the women's program, both on the field and in the classroom. She was named a Division III All-American for three consecutive years, where she was twice named the New York State Defensive Player of the Year. Academically, she was twice elected as an ESPN, the magazine Academic All-American in women's soccer by members of the Collegiate Sports Information Directors of America. Additionally, she was named a National Soccer Coaches Association of America Adidas Scholar All-American. Van Vechten was also a Renaissance scholar, a Fulbright scholar, named as a Lyle Spike Garnish scholar, and was a member of the Cadian's Senior Honor Society. She holds a level C coaching certification from the United States Soccer Federation. She graduated from the university in 2008 with a Bachelor of Arts with, a dual, with dual majors in history and German language and culture. She studied at Rochester's Warner School of Education doing coursework for an MS in Educational Administration student affairs and academic career advising. She completed her work on an MED in higher education administration at Suffolk University. Coach will give her remarks and then we'll open up to Q&A. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you enjoy the presentation and good to see everyone here. Ashley, it's all yours. Thanks so much, Terry. Um, I'd like to first start by thanking um, Terry Grinnett and Kayla um, and all the other folks in advancement for putting this together. Um, it's such a special opportunity to be here, um, virtually at least chatting with you folks um, and sharing a little bit more about myself and my vision for the program. Um, you know, as, as Terry mentioned, um, I was fortunate enough to attend Rochester as a student athlete um, and I had an exceptional experience here um, in my four years and beyond. Um, I, I kind of, I graduated with a um, degree in history and German um, and took that into a teaching assistantship opportunity um, in Germany. Um, I, I love teaching, um, but ultimately I didn't love teaching English. Um, so when I returned uh, stateside, I was able to start kind of on my coaching path. Um, and I'd like to, you know, kind of take you folks through um, my vision for this program um, and, and what, what we hope to develop and continue developing here in Rochester. Um, you know, Rochester to me, is a special place because of the people. Um, when I was you know, given the opportunity to come back um, and, and become a steward of this program, um, I, I could not wait to get back here um, and working with some of the incredible folks um, who have helped shape, shape the course of my life um, and, and be able to provide that for our current students as well as our future Yellow Jackets. Um, my vision for the program is, is you know, in sum and substance, it's about attracting exceptional people and providing them with an exceptional experience. Um, Rochester has all the resources and tools to be able to do that. 
Um, you know, I am so excited to, to work with a group of um, emerging adults who are pursuing excellence. Um, and we wanna do that um, in a way that, that continues on a legacy of integrity. Um, you know, the, the things that I've talked about so far with our student athletes um, have been simple and we're gonna start simple in order to continue building. Um, and right now it's about giving 100% effort in everything that we do, be it, you know, attending a lab lecture, um, being in the varsity weight room with our teammates, um, giving of ourselves and giving everything that we possibly can puts us in a position to continue to grow um, and develop. The next thing that we talked about as a group is, is focus. Um, having you know, the ability to tune into what we're doing, to be mindful, um, you know, whether it's um, you know, extra hours with a professor um, or on-field learning. Um, I want folks who are focused and engaged um, and, and have 100% of that um, you know, intensity with them. And the last thing we've talked about a little bit is, is mentality. Um, you know, I, you know, in my playing career, uh, I was so fortunate um, to play, you know, with some of the folks that I see on this call, um, as well as be able to coach some of the other alumni that we have um, and, and learning from, from Terry and, and all the alumni who came before us. Um, having the right mentality to compete is so critical. Um, and, and that's one thing that we're looking to continue to develop here. Um, you know, my vision for this is, again, as I said, pursuing excellence with integrity. Um, but it's also about individual growth, uh, making sure that our students are being put into an environment where they will be challenged and they will be challenged to develop um, skills that will help inform their careers and their future. Um, we want to create a really competitive environment because we know the competitive landscape um, that we have that we're being asked to work within. Um, and, and that environment needs to be one in which students have the opportunity uh, to learn about themselves, to identify areas for growth, to have the um, resources and tools to start developing, um, and then be able to practice those skills um, in an environment where there are some stakes um, and, and they can really start to engender the confidence in their own ability. Um, you know, that to me is one of the most important aspects of, of any program and, and one that I'm excited to, to lead. Um, in terms of more specifics, you know, I know a lot of our alumni on this call and our parents on this call, they definitely want to hear that, you know, some of our goals are, are to become a more competitive program, um, without a doubt. Uh, we wanna be competing within the top half of the UAA. Um, we want to challenge for at-large NCAA bids and eventually get to the point where we are um, looking to, to win our conference. Um, it's going to take time, but as I look around at Rochester and all the incredible um, resources that we have, um, it's possible. It's definitely possible. And, and that, that, you know, that excites me every single day to, to come into the office um, and to work with our student athletes. Um, so that's kind of the environment that, that I'm hoping to, to continue to create here. Um, in Rochester. And, and a big part of that is the work that, that you folks can do as alumni and as parents and as supporters of our program. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more later about your role within our program's vision. Um, but for now, you know, know that I want you to be part of it. Um, and, I, and I want our alumni to know um, that they are crucial to the work that we do. Your, your, your participation in the program is not over. Um, there are so many ways for you to get involved. And one of my big visions for this program is to have our current students develop meaningful connections with our alumni. Um, we know all the fantastic things that you're doing. Um, and I want our current students to be able to feel part of that network and to rely on your experiences um, to help shape their futures. Um, I want to get in a little bit to um, my coaching philosophy now, and I'll give you folks something else to look at um, rather than just me. So I've created just a little PowerPoint for you folks. Um, let's see. And um, I just want to go through um, and talk a little bit about the things that I've learned um, as a coach and, and what's shaping my coaching philosophy and the values that I hold dear. Um, you know, put up a first slide of just our, our current program. Um, we have so many exceptional individuals here within our program. Um, and as I mentioned before, that is our mission. We wanna bring and continue to bring exceptional people into this program um, and provide them with an exceptional experience. The way that I wanna do that is by being education oriented. Um, I am not 
somebody um, who who thinks that everything is going to be perfect. Um, you know, in my opinion, perfection doesn't exist. Um, we are all, you know, I'm looking to, to create an environment that has a, a growth mindset at the forefront. Um, and, and what that means is knowing that whatever we're asking them to achieve, be it, you know, a, a, an opportunity to stand up in front of your team and, and have a speaking opportunity, um, or, you know, can you mark that player out of a game, potentially, um, whatever that uh, ask is, I want them to feel capable and confident um, to meet that challenge. Um, and that means developing a growth mindset, whatever skill you're at, you know, we're going to use time and effort and resources to get you better than you were the day before. Um, and I think that really ties into our mission of Meliora, um, you know, ever better. And, and that's something that's informed my life and, and one that I'm excited to, to bring here. Um, you know, all of the students that you see, um, you know, on the screen there, um, these are unique individuals. They all have their own unique abilities. They all have their own ways of, of thinking about the world, of seeing the world. Um, you know, we know that a big part of a Rochester education is the ability to offer an open curriculum where students can, can pursue whatever passions they have. Um, for those reasons, you know, I know that my role is to develop meaningful connections with each of these individuals. Um, and those are going to be connections founded in respect. Um, I, I get, I'm so fortunate because I get to work with young adults um, and they are adults, they're emerging adults. Um, who need, you know, maybe a little bit of guidance and support and help. Um, and that's what I'm here to do. But, you know, as a, as a female head coach, I understand, you know, the power of my position. Um, the fact that, that I am in a position of power and I'm, I'm mindful of that. I understand how much my words and my actions influence um, and can impact our students. Um, and that is at the forefront of my mind. I have been so fortunate in my life to have coaches who believed in me. Um, who, who gave me, you know, all the, the, the resources available to feel confident to meet whatever challenge ahead. And I want to be able to provide that for our students. And that work starts in the relationships that we have with one another. Um, another philosophy and value that I have in terms of coaching is, is collaborative soccer. You know, if we're going to talk tactics for a second here, um, I want to be a team that relies on one another. Um, it's one of the things that drew me to this sport. Um, and one of the things that I find um, so uh, powerful and meaningful within soccer um, is the collaborative aspect. Using one another's strengths um, to help bolster our own is so special. Um, I've talked a little bit about growth mindset um, and, and within growth mindset is the idea that any mistake that you make is simply information. Um, that's something that I've picked up along my coaching journey and, and really informs the way that I educate students, um, both on the field, in the weight room, in the, you know, in the uh, classroom, um, in our offices. Mistakes are information. Um, you're never going to go through a performance completely flawless, um, and neither am I. Um, and for that reason, any mistake that you make for me is simply, that's another area where now I know we can target that. You know, if you, if you, shank a ball out of bounds, let's say, now I know, okay, we need to maybe look at the way that you're striking a ball. Um, mistakes are information, and I'm so excited um, to bring that mentality in because I've seen firsthand how quickly a program can grow um, with that at the forefront. The last thing I wanna talk about um, within my coaching philosophy is um, challenge and support. Um, those are the ways in which we can develop student athletes and to see their, um, invest in their growth. Um, this is gonna be a program with really, really, really high challenges, um, really high expectations, um, but they're also going to come with the level of support required to meet those challenges and exceed them. Um, finding that balance between challenge and support is so critical and it doesn't look the same for everybody. Um, but those are some of the ways in which my coaching value, uh, my coaching values and philosophy will inform the direction of this program. Um, speaking more specifically, you know, we know we compete in the best conference in Division Three, without a doubt. The UAA is the strongest, it's the hardest, it has the most travel, it has the um, highest caliber of student athlete. Um, and, and that's, I think, what, what you know, gets everybody excited to compete within it. Um, in order to start, you know, creating a program where we can com compete in the top half of this exceptional conference that you see, 
um, we need to be recruiting. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of some of the work that we've already done um, to continue to develop this program and bring in exceptional people. Um, these are some of the events that we like to get to every year. Um, you know, and, and as I mentioned before, I wanna connect our alumni with this. Um, so you know, we'll talk a little bit more at the end about how you folks can get involved. Um, but right now, that's the recruiting schedule. If there's an event near you, let me know. Um, I would love to partner that with an opportunity to take you to lunch, take you to dinner, maybe even coffee. Um, start to build those relationships with our alumni. Um, another thing I wanted to, to let you folks know, and, and some of the things that I found here at Rochester that are so exciting, are some of the innovation that I've seen already. Um, we now have the UR Medicine Fitness Science team who works hand in hand with us. Um, they are strength and conditioning certified, um, incredible professionals with a background in injury prevention that work with our team so that I can focus on the soccer playing or the recruiting or alumni connections. Um, we've got sports psychology, um, a sports psychologist who works with our group. We've got folks um, focused on nutrition, data analysis to see are our methods producing the results that we're hoping for. Um, and I, I'm so privileged to work um, and be supported by a team that has a background in this. Um, it, it really is exceptional, the experiences that we're able to provide for our students. I want to stop the share um, and take a second to talk about the vision that I have, um, which includes you folks, you alumni. Um, alumni engagement is one of the most critical things um, to help our program continue to develop. Um, you know, there, there are more than just one way to, to support this team. Um, and I want to make sure that you folks understand that and, and we know that. Um, you know, I know that not everybody is in a position to be able to support this program financially. And that's not the only way. Um, I want you folks to know that there are multiple ways to get involved. Um, you know, and we can meet you wherever you're at in terms of the ways in which you'd like to support this program. Um, let me share my screen again. I'm gonna... So with kind of alumni support in mind, the first thing I wanna do is thank you folks. Um, I, I asked Terry this morning in the hallway, um, you know, our program has pretty much won nearly every March Matchness. Um, and those are our, our uh, giving campaigns um, to help raise um, support for our programs. That tells me how much you are invested in this team and in this program success. Um, and I wanna start by saying thank you. With alumni support in mind, um, as I mentioned, there's so many ways that you um, can support us. Yes, financially, you can give, you can donate, um, but you can also come to our matches, come to our practices, come to our events. We've got alumni games, we've got um, Meliora weekend events, um, you know, on the road. If you're located near one of our uh, away trips, please let me know. We would love to partner it with a visit. Um, and, and to give our team more opportunities to connect with you folks. Um, recruiting is another way that you can help. Um, I imagine so many of you are still plugged into soccer communities um, across the nation. If you've identified you know, exceptional student athletes that you think would be a great fit for Rochester, let us know. Um, I'm always happy to chat with somebody in a family or, or trade emails. Um, those are ways in which you can support us. Um, the last way and, and the one that I'm most energized to talk about um, is within networking. Um, you know, stay connected to the program. Um, I want this to be a program where when I talk with future Yellow Jackets, those are 16-year-olds, you know, 17-year-olds, year olds, I can talk to them about our alumni and talk to them about the incredible things that you're doing in your careers and the ways in which Rochester helped you achieve them. Um, it can be nothing more, um, nothing as as, as you know, intensive as just sending an email and let us know, what are you doing now? What field are you in? What types of experiences did you have along the way? And are you willing to maybe help mentor one of our current or future student athletes who's interested in pursuing the same passions as you? Networking is so uh, important. And it's one of the things that I'm most excited um, to be in a position to do um, now here as, as a, a program leader and a steward um, of, of our beloved program, which we all love. 
Um, so, you know, those are the ways in which alumni can get involved. And, and you know, I hope I've given you a real sense for, for who I am um, and, and the direction that I want to take this program in. Um, I want to thank you all for being part of this call. Um, you know, it tells me that we've got a group that's really invested in our success. And I'm excited to get to know each of you. Um, if we don't already have a relationship, trust that I'll be reaching out in the future um, because that's one of the most um, exciting aspects of, of what I get to do. Um, Kayla, I'm, you know, I want to turn it back over to you um, for the Q&A section. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ashley. Very exciting things happening with women's soccer. I'm Kayla Granger from the Office of Alumni Relations, and I'm going to be moderating our Q&A today. Um, so just a reminder to everyone, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Coach Van Becton, please go ahead and put them in the chat and I will get them up there for her. Um, I do have a few to just get us started. Um, so now that we've seen your recruiting schedule and we know how important recruiting is, can you tell us how you plan to sell Rochester to future students? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I talked about finding exceptional people. Um, and to me, that means, of course, high academically performing individuals. We know how rigorous this institution is. Um, and I'm looking for students who are energized by the challenges that Rochester will set forth for them. Um, that was the group that I was fortunate enough to work with as a student athlete um, and as an assistant coach. And that's a legacy I wanna continue. Um, identifying people who are excited to be tested and pushed is such an important thing. Um, and, and that work starts in the recruiting process. Um, the other thing that I, I you know, when I, when I think about Rochester in our curriculum, the open curriculum um, is one of the best aspects of Rochester and really sets us apart um, from other institutions. Um, not a lot of other, um, you know, of our academic peers are, are doing what we do with our open curriculum, meaning there are no required courses except for one writing course to make sure that you're at the collegiate level. Um, but other than that, you can follow whatever you want to do. Um, and what we find is our students come away with double majors, triple majors, minors, all sorts of different um, extra learning opportunities because they spend their entire four years here um, pursuing their passions. And I think that's, that's one of the most um, exciting things to me about, about Rochester. Yeah, that's a really great point. I know you touched on this a little bit, but if you might want to expand on what exactly you're looking for in recruits. Yeah, um, so there's that mentality piece that I talked about, um, you know, of course, within athletics, we've got to find really quality athletes, um, you know, that's, that's about, you know, how they move through space, how their agility moves, you know, speed, quickness, all those different things that you would look for um, within tremendous student athletes we're looking for. Um, another aspect to recruiting, though, is about work rate. Um, how often is a student athlete attempting to make an impact in a game? That to me is so important. It says a lot about how competitive they are um, and how they see themselves within their team dynamic. Uh, we want to find folks who have a high level of work rate and subsequently a high impact within um, their team and, and within their, their structure. Um, so those are some of the ways um, that we look you know, at recruits. Certainly their character um, is, is another massively important aspect to, to what we're looking for. The ways in which they interact with their family, the ways in which their um, club coaches or their high school guidance counselors talk about them, the ways in which they interact with their friends, um, all of those things inform us how, um, you know, what type of person they are and whether or not they're going to be able to come in um, and not just fit with our team, but give our team another perspective and give our team a higher degree of value. That's so important. Thank you so much. Um, so now that we know what you're looking for, can you tell us how the team is looking so far? Oh my gosh, it's it's been phenomenal getting to know them, um, working with them. You know, right now we're in our off season, um, so NCAA rules uh, prohibit me from you know doing anything on field with the team. So they're uh, right now we're our only kind of interaction as a, a program is within the varsity weight room, uh, doing our lifts and strength and conditioning with our UR fitness science team. Um, it has just been a joy watching these people work, watching them interact, um, seeing the relationships that they've already built with one another, um, seeing where we maybe have some opportunities to continue to develop. Um, but you know, first and foremost, there is a genuine excitement um, that I see within these student athletes um, and their 
energized by the work that they've done in the past um, and, and by the, the future that they see um, is, is that they're heading towards. Yeah. It's really great to see how excited you are about the team. Um, we've gotten a couple of questions about a possible international trip for the team. Can you talk about that, if that's something that's still planned for the season and any additional information you can provide on it? Yeah, so, you know, first and foremost, we have to consider the safety and feasibility um, given COVID um, and the, the, you know, both our domestic landscape as well as international landscape. Um, you know, I'm going to be able to work with um, our, our advancement folks to figure out what's possible. I know that this program had uh, 2023 planned in terms of a foreign tour, um, and that's something that we hope to be able to execute. Um, and, and that's, you know, my role is to kind of start getting in there and figuring out, you know, how much funds have been raised for that, um, how feasible is it in terms of COVID guidelines to take this team abroad. Um, I know how important it is to our students, and I've talked with so many of them already. Um, they are just itching to have that foreign tour, to have that experience abroad, um, and I, I back that 100%. Um, so if not in 2023, we would look to 2024, um, but my hope is that we'll be able to do it in 2023. Great. Um, another question in the chat. Have you had a chance to watch film of the games from the past season, and what are your thoughts on those? Yeah, uh, I got a chance to watch a few, um, you know, first and foremost, as a fan of the program, as an alumni of the program, you know, as somebody with my yellow jacket outfit on just cheering along, um, I got a chance to watch you know, the program compete a little bit from the fall, um, and then one opportunity to see them play um, live in person. Um, and it, it, it really has, has excited me. There's such a good foundation there um, in terms of the way that these students compete. Um, we will add more. Um, and, and my intention is to add layers of, of both um, technical uh, skill and tactical understanding. Um, there's some things that we can kind of adjust already so that our students have a really clear understanding of how to be successful when they go out onto that field to compete. And I'm excited to get out there. Um, my next opportunity is gonna be our spring training um, and that's gonna start uh, March 21st, weather permitting. <laughs> Great. So another question in the chat. Um, what is your vision for offense, pressing and defense, more Liverpool or more defense minded like the Italian national team? Oh, this is awesome. Oh, I love the tactical talk here. This is what I'm here for. Um, you know, so my, my vision of the program has to suit the skill set of our current student athletes. Um, there's no two ways about it. Um, that's something that I learned um, at my previous institution. We've got to find a way to maximize the things that we already do well while continuing to add and push and challenge to start mastering the things that we don't quite do well. Um, so, you know, you can take a look at the way that the program performed this past fall and understand that there's a level of defensive st uh, stability there. Um, now it's about how as a, as a group can we create consistent goal scoring chances? Um, so to, to, the, to the specific question, am I more of Liverpool, defensive? I'm both. Um, you know, I understand that to be successful within the UAA, we have to have a level of defensive uh, stability, but that should not take away from our ability to create attacking chances. Um, you know, I am somebody who firmly believes in, um, you know, creating a team tactical principles that will help us replicate easy chances. You know, I'm not talking about creating a system where you have to have the ability to strike a ball 30 yards rising into the net. You know, those are chances that happen, but, but those you cannot create consistently. Um, I want to get us to a point where we are consistently creating chances I could finish, you know, and I, I was a center back defender, so I'm not a great finisher, but that's the goal for our program to move us in the direction that we need to go in. Great. Thank you. All right. A question yeah. from parents of an incoming freshman. Um, they've heard that there might be a spring event for the team in March or April. Are there any events that their students should attend prior to arriving in August? Yeah, so we've been um, kind of coordinating, um, and, and hello, I'm, I'm so glad to see you folks on this call as well. Um, we're coordinating to try to figure out a good time for those folks to come and visit. My best guess would be our spring play day. 
Um, that's going to be an opportunity at the end of our spring season to see both um, our team compete um, in our spring play day. We've got a, a good two matches lined up against um, Nazareth College and SUNY Brockport College. Um, two of our local opponents. Um, and that would be a great opportunity to bring incoming folks in to see, you know, kind of the, 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 the payoff of our spring training as well as watch the team play and be connected in with our, our team. Um, so I would aim for that, but more information will be coming in terms of details, um, kind of coordinating everybody um, and making sure that that's an event that if you choose to go, you understand kind of what that weekend might look like for your, for your daughter. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, do you happen to know any dates for alumni games or spring games? Yes, 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 I do. Um, so our alumni match will take place April 9th. Um, that's a Saturday. Um, and, you know, depending on how many folks we can get, you know, kind of out of retirement and back onto the field, um, it may be team versus alumni, we might also run it as um, evens versus odds in terms of graduation year. Um, again, with my vision being that I really want our alumni to feel connected um, and to have meaningful relationships with our students, I wanna also include a networking component to that alumni event where folks can share stories, make contacts, make connections, um, and really feel like they're part of a bigger network. Um, so that's our alumni match. That's gonna be April 9th. Um, probably at uh, late morning, early afternoon. Um, and then we'll also include some sort of celebration for our alumni in the evening, an opportunity to share a meal, hang out, spend time with one another um, and, and really kind of celebrate our alumni. Um, and then April 23rd is that other date that I mentioned. That's our spring play day where we're gonna be able to um, play two 50 minute matches against um, Nazareth and SUNY Brockport. Great. and then. Ashley, do you know, will any of the spring games be um, recorded or live streamed? Is there a way for people to view them online? That's a great question. Um, I can connect with um, Nazareth is hosting the event. So if they've got the capability and would want to do that, um, you know, I, I would encourage that. I also know that us coaches are, you know, we're a little cagey and it might be the case where they wouldn't want that spring tape out to the public or to our potential competitors. Um, so that can be something that I, I follow up on. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Another question in the chat. Are there any particular positions that you're recruiting for? Um, all positions. We're, we're always recruiting for all positions. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, I, I think is important given, um, you know, the, the landscape of collegiate soccer, given the potential for injury that we know is always possible. Um, we're always recruiting at all positions. It's just a matter of how many in each class year. And that's going to be decided based on, you know, current student athlete um, development, if they're meeting their trajectory, if they're meeting their, their goals and the goals that our staff have set for them. Um, as well as, you know, character, things like that. Um, but that's a, that's a great question. And it, it's usually always, we're recruiting at all positions. Great. All right. Another question about recruiting um, and how people who are located outside of the Rochester area can help you now or in the future. I'm excited to see you going to some different places. What's the best way for them to contact you? And what are the best ways for them to help you in these efforts? That's a that's a great question. And, and you know, it, it starts with an email or a text message. My my cell phone is in my signature line. Um, so if you've gotten an email from me, you've also got my cell phone. You can reach out via email, via text message. Let me know where you're located and what you're kind of willing to do to help support. Um, you know, it can be, you know, figuring out a time frame where, you know, if I'm recruiting all day, we can maybe make plans to have dinner in the evening and talk more about how to kind of develop that support. Um, there's so many different ways to get involved. We are, um, you know, NCAA wise, um, there are some restrictions on how many of, you know, Rochester staff can be present at recruiting events. Um, but if you've got, you know, that background in soccer, if you've been part of this program, if you feel um, that you actually want to be out there on the, on the field with us, um, there's ways that we can make that happen as well. Great. And I know in your um, remarks, you, you talked a little bit about March matchness. Could you share a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, yeah. March Matchness is our annual giving campaign, um, and it is a competition between every program at Rochester, first and foremost. So know that all of our program leaders are so excited to win this thing. Um, and it, it is, it's incredible that our women's soccer program um, has been, you know, I think we've racked up, I, I want to say at least six or seven titles at this point, um, with having the highest percentage of alumni support, the highest percentage of friend and family support. Um, we really have kind of set the pace in terms of other programs here at Rochester. And, and my hope is that we can keep doing that um, into this March. Um, so March Matchness will run, I believe March 21st. Um, I cannot remember the, the end date, but it goes for about a week. Um, and it's a time period where the university will help match any donations that are given to our program. Um, and it's an internal competition, um, as I said, between programs. And we're also gonna do some things unique to our women's soccer program. Um, I definitely wanna make a competition within class year um, and see which class year is giving the most um, you know, financial support to the program. Um, my money's on my class, of course, the BCE. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we can have some, some healthy competition between class years to see who can generate the most um, support. Great. That sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. Um, are there any other ways that alumni can support the women's soccer program? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Tell us where you live. And if we're in the area, we'd love to come visit you at your home if you'd like to host us. Um, it can be nothing more than maybe if you're, you know, down in Atlanta attending our Emory game, you could just buy us pizzas or something after the match. Um, water, cases of water are always accepted. Um, they do tend to get pretty thirsty after matches. So there's so many different ways to kind of show your support um, you know, and, and you, whoever the, the person is that's interested, um, we can talk further about ways that you can support us and brainstorm something that makes sense for you. Um, I don't think everyone's support is going to look exactly the same. Um, and I'm very aware that there are some folks who maybe have just graduated who aren't in a position to give of their own financial resources, but if they can give their time um, if they can give, you know, a, a mentorship opportunity. Um, these are ways in which you can help support us. Awesome. Um, do you want to maybe just share with us a little bit of your, your main first impressions of coaching at Rochester, some of your big takeaways? Yeah, um, you know, one of my biggest takeaways is the support that I receive. Um, it, it was one of the things that I was most excited to come back um, to this program and be part of. Um, the collaboration between coaches, the collaboration between um, our athletic staff um, and, and all of our athletics professionals who help support our mission is just incredible. Um, I have learned already so much um, just being here for for the short period of time that I've been here um, you know seeing the ways in which other coaches operate and their willingness to help out I mean I can't tell you how many other program leaders have come up to me in the hallways or popped into my office and said you know hey Ashley you know welcome how can I help what do you need you know I'm here I've got this shortcut already done I've got this other resource that really helped me um, you know that type of collaboration is, is incredible that's so great to hear. Well, it looks like we've kind of run through all of the questions that we've got in the chat. If anyone else has any they'd like to send through, you can do that really quickly. Um, there was a clarification on the March matchness. It looks like those dates will be March 21st through the 31st. So look for more information on that to come. Um, and if we don't have any other questions, then I'm going to turn it back over to Ashley to kind of wrap us up. All right, well, um, again, thank you so much um, to Kayla Granger, to Terry Grinnett for putting this opportunity together. Um, and thank you to all of you who are here on this Zoom, um, giving us uh, your time and attention. Um, it's really a pleasure um, to be here you know, in this role um, in the future. And I'm so excited to continue connecting with you folks, to learn more about you folks, um, and continue to grow this program um, in, in the ways that, that we all wanted to go. Um, so thank you so much uh, for spending a little bit of time with me. Um, you know, I imagine that this is not going to be a, our only conversation. Um, I'm excited to get to know all of you more um, and continue speaking about the program and, and continue um, our mission of Meliora. So thank you. All right. Well, Ashley, well done. Um, there is going to be some conversation about uh, the BCE, which uh, 
best class ever. Um, I am. Uh, I don't know very much, but I do know enough to stay out of that uh, <laughs> out of that debate. There's there's been a lot of discussion over that. But uh, th thank you so very much for your presentation. I uh, really appreciated all of it, your insights, and uh, I, I just we're just really excited to have you here. And thanks to all of you here that uh, joined us today, and uh, we hope you all enjoyed it too. A uh, special thanks to our moderator, uh, Kayla Granger. She did a great job, so well done, Kayla. And uh, so we thank you all for your continued support for uh, Rochester Women's Soccer. And I invite you to uh, contact uh, Coach directly if you have any further questions. So have a great day. Go Jackets. And uh, thank you again for joining us, everybody.